more than two-thirds full. Also make sure to clamp around the ground glass joint at the top of the separating funnel. Before transferring any liquids into the funnel, always ensure the stop clock is closed. When the tap is vertical, the stop clock is open, and when the tap is horizontal, the stop clock is closed. When pouring liquids, you may wish to use a measuring cylinder or long-stemmed funnel to prevent spillages. When both the solution and the extraction solvent have been added, layers will begin to form. One layer is the aqueous phase and the other layer is the organic phase. Here we added colour to the aqueous and organic layers to show the separation more clearly, but it is more common for both layers to be colourless. The key to the separation of layers in a separating funnel is density. The bottom layer is the more dense solution, but this is not always the aqueous phase. For example, the separating funnel on the right has the orange aqueous phase. And that controls the flow of liquid out of the funnel. You'll see if you look carefully, there's a small hole going through it. And so if we turn it by 90 degrees, the liquid can now flow out. And if we turn it back, you will once again see the hole is no longer lined up to allow liquid to flow out and the flow stops. Start, stop. And so that gives us the control to allow the liquid to flow out of the funnel. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate using one. So, two things to start off. Check that the stop clock is working and put a conical flask in place underneath the flask. Lower it down a little bit to make sure that it's not going to splash as the liquid comes down. Next, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use chloroform which is contaminated with iodine. So I'm going to try and extract the iodine out of the chloroform. And so now I'm going to pour it into the separating funnel. Before pouring anything into the separating funnel, you should stop and check. And the reason that you always put the conical flask there first is in case you don't make this check and you make the mistake. You have to make sure though that the funnel is closed before you start pouring anything into it. And you do that by showing that the arm of the stopcock is at 90 degrees to the spout. You can also see the hole going through if you look carefully when you have it in front of you. So now I can put in my chloroform. I put in my chloroform and then I'm going to put in the water. And of course, water floats on chloroform because chloroform is heavier than water. Next, I put my lid in and I take my separating funnel out of the clamp. And now what I'm going to do is shake it. Before I shake it, I have to make sure of two things. One, that the stopper is securely in place and two, that I'm holding it so that it's not going to fall out. Give it a small shake and then vent the pressure out. So it will immediately have some pressure form inside. Vent it, give it a much stronger shake, and then vent it again. And when you're venting it, make sure that it is not pointing at anyone or anything within the lab, because some liquid is going to come out of it. Not very much, but you certainly want it not to go towards somebody's face. Or <laughs> or onto anything that might be of value or might be taken out of the lab. So just be a little bit careful when you're doing that. Once you've given it a good shake, check the stopper comes out and there's not too much pressure in it, and then you can clamp it again and wait for it to separate out. After a little while, you'll see that 
all of the iodine has remained in the chloroform layer. And that's because iodine is not soluble in water. It's a non-polar molecule, and so it has no reason to dissolve. So what do we do? Well, we let the bottom layer out through the tap. Give it a few minutes, I've sped it up a little bit. And just before the end, you can take it out of the clamp and swirl it around in case there are any little blobs of solvent stuck up in the water layer, as can often happen. Clamp it again and finish draining it. Once you've finished draining it then, we want to take the water layer out. It didn't do a good job of extracting it, we want it out of the separating funnel. The top layer always comes out the top of the separating funnel. So the bottom layer goes out the bottom and the top layer goes out the top. And that way we avoid contaminating the two layers with the small amount of bottom layer that is going to be remaining inside the channel inside the stopcock. So just unclamp it and pour it into another conical flask. Simple as that. Once we've emptied our separating funnel, we can put the chloroform back in again, because we want to have another go at extracting it. This time we're going to use something a little bit different. We're going to use a solution of potassium iodide. So potassium iodide, as you'll know from your lectures, contains I-. And the I-, or the iodide, is going to react with the iodine to form I-3-, which is polar and, of course, soluble then in water. So if we give this a go and we extract it, we should be able to take the pink or purple color out of the chloroform. Watch as I pour this, I'm going to pause it for a second and see that the liquid is clear before it hits the water. And as soon as it hits the water then, it starts to extract out the iodine. But of course, we can very much speed it on its way by giving it a good shake. And you notice that I vent it, shake it, vent it, and that the chloroform is now significantly less iodine in it. And you can tell that based on the color of it. Of course, we want all of the iodine out of the chloroform. So, पृथकीकरण पानल पृथकीकरण कर
প্রথমে পেট্রোলিয়াম কিভাবে তৈরি হয় এটা আমাদের বহু দিনের প্রশ্ন Petrol and diesel are mixed in this thick oily black liquid which has unpleasant smell. Like me, even are you curious to know where we get this petroleum from or how is it formed? Petroleum is formed from marine organisms which lived long long ago. About a million years ago, marine organisms died and settled on the sea floor as the time passed they got covered with more and more sand and clay this created pressure on these dead remains of the organisms now due to high pressure temperature and absence of air these dead remains which are called fossils got converted into natural gas and petroleum oil Meanwhile, the sand and clay which were, which got covered on the... You can see that the sand and clay which got covered on the... You can see that the sand and clay which got covered on the... You can see that the sand and clay which got covered on the... You can see that the sand and clay which got covered on the... You can see that the sand and clay which got covered on the... Which means eventually made up rocks. It takes a million of years for this process to get completed. Now what happens after the oil and gas is formed? The constant movement and pressure of the earth squeezes the oil and gas into rocks which are formed. Now these rocks are called reservoir rocks. The entire reservoir so formed by oil and gas can be as large as a city. But some of the oil and gas seep through the pores of these rocks and start rising upwards as they are lighter than water. Now petroleum oil being lighter than water floats above water and natural gas being even lighter than the petroleum oil forms a layer above the oil. But these layer of oil and gas are trapped by rocks called impervious rocks. Now the next question that arises in my mind is that if petroleum is formed deep under the sea, then how do we find it? There are many ways to find petroleum deposits. To add to your knowledge, one of the way is through a seismographic survey. This survey identifies the places wherever the petroleum deposits are found. Once the survey is done and the petroleum deposits are found, it can be easily pumped out from the oil reservoirs through oil wells which are drilled under the sea and then it is transported through huge pipes. Now let us go to the olden days where people didn't know the importance of petroleum. That time oil was first seen floating in water. People thought of it as a wastage but as time passed they realized that this petroleum oil is of much much importance. So they started finding out the resource or the place where we can get the petroleum oil deposits. And then they drilled oil wells and pumped the oil out. Do you know where the world's first oil well is drilled? It was drilled in Pennsylvania, which is in the USA in the year 1859. Now eight years later, that is in 1867, Oil was first stuck in India in Assam at a place called Makum. Here, oil was accidentally found out by a few men who found their elephants' legs stuck in mud. This mud smelled like oil. So these men started exploring that area and British started an oil installation there. And finally, India found its first oil refinery. At present, in India, we find oil deposits in Assam, in Gujarat, in Mumbai High, and in the river basins of Godavari and Krishna. Now let us learn something more about petroleum. Petroleum is a mixture of several substances. Two of them you already know, petrol and diesel. Other important things mixed in petroleum are petroleum gas, kerosene, paraffin wax, 
lubricating oil and bitumen. How and where do we use these substances? देखो हेटा तो हमारे लाचे जे ए जो पेट्रोलियम पेट्रोलियम में जो संजुक्ति संजुक्ति माने ए जे परसेंटेज था कतो तके कतो थक चे स्पूरन आपको विस्तार आचे अने कोठा तके कतो संजुक्ति माने कौन फॉर्मूला तके शुरू होते हैं सी सिक्स एस फोर्टीन तके शुरू होते हैं सी इलेवन एस ट्वेंटी फोर को जन्दो जब हम लोगों तो अपन हम लोग बुझते पड़ोगे एक शर्ट की मतलब क्या था हाइड्रोकार्बन है ये बोलो सभी अच्छे हाइड्रोकार्बन है जोगो जब उन पेट्रोल बाय गैसोलीन इस पूरे नाम को अच्छे शोध करते के दूसरों तो सांझुक्ति अच्छे C6 H14 ते के C11 H24 बाबाहर मोटर गाड़ी चालानी ये बात देखो केरोसिन केरोसिन हम लोग ये � अब इधर शाहौ चानन उपाय होते हैं सी पारो ए छाप बीच तार में इधर के माध्यम से एक तो तुम तुम इन जिसे लिखते पारो पर इधर शाहौ जो लिखते पार भी की कोड़े एक जो कॉमन फॉर्मूला टा आचे से कॉमन फॉर्मूला टा आचे सी एन एच टू एन प्लस टू इधर आमी आज सी एक तो पढ़े आप इधर के क्लियर कुछ यहाँ C C H thirty four पे एक बार अच्छे पेट्रोल एटम तीन सौ रो पड़े पैराफिन मोम तीन सौ रो पड़े ठीक है जी एक बार इधर बाबार जानता है अभी मोमबत्ती मोम देवा कागज एस्पोर्ट दे किया है रास्ता तो इधर कालो रोंग को किया है कार्बन तोड़ी था सब्सटेंसेस लेट्स फाइंड आउट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट पेट्रोल फर्स्ट पेट्रोल that is a fuel used for aircrafts. It is also used as a solvent for dry cleaning where clothes are cleaned without the solvent water. Now let's talk about diesel. Diesel is a fuel generally used by heavy motor vehicles. It is also used as a fuel in electric generators. What are generators? Generators provide electricity during power cuts. Now let's talk about the next petroleum product that is the petroleum gas. Petroleum gas is usually used in... Okay. So, let's talk about the problem of how this product is going to happen. Now, let's talk about the problem of how we are going to separate the panel. So, let's talk about the problem of how we are going to get the fundamental question. How we are going to get the problem of how we are going to get the problem of how we are going to get the problem of how we are going to get the problem. सेटा आपको एक बहुत बजाज चेस्टा कोडी। It's so boring. So now the question is that how we are getting petroleum? Let us see a video. Petroleum is the compressed, superheated remains of animals that died millions of years ago. Yet this fossil fuel is essential to sustaining our society and our industry. Without it, mankind would fall back into pre-industrial revolution times. Petroleum is all around us. 90% of all chemicals used in our industry are made from petroleum, and more than half of the world's primary energy needs are fueled by it. This fossil fuel has quite a journey, from the time it is pulled up out of the ground to the time it is sold as a product. In this documentary, we will take you on that journey. We will take you on a tour of the petroleum industry. This is the Earth. It's really, really big. It has a total circumference of 40,000 kilometers at the equator and a surface area of 510 million kilometers squared. And the vast majority of petroleum is found underground. So how on earth do we find it in order to extract it? Geologists can use a variety of different methods to locate oil even when it resides deep beneath the Earth's surface. 
The most common method of locating oil is via seismic survey. Essentially, geologists use a variety of different tools to emit sound waves, which then delve into the Earth's crust, some of which bounce back to the surface. A computer can then interpret these sound waves and create a detailed three-dimensional image of the various geological formations beneath the surface, thus providing the approximate location and amount of oil in any given oil reservoir. If the oil is worth extracting, we then go on to the next stage of the petroleum industry, drilling. Before the oil can be extracted from the reservoir, a well must first be drilled. This well is created during the second stage of the petroleum industry, drilling. In order to carry out drilling operations, a temporary drilling rig is constructed. The large derrick allows for a pulley system that can support a long drill pipe attached to the drill bit. A turntable turns the kelly, which is attached to the drill pipe, to allow the drill bit to drill. As the drill bit plunges deep underground, drilling fluid is pumped down through the drill pipe to wash the rock cuttings out. The resulting mud returns to the surface and passes through a shale shaker, which removes any unwanted solids from the mud. The mud is then poured into a tank, where it is then used as drilling fluid to remove further rock cuttings. Once the well has been drilled to sufficient depth, the walls are reinforced with concrete and steel casing, and then the drilling rig is deconstructed. The next stage of the petroleum industry is production. In this stage, the oil is extracted from the reservoir. This is done with an oil rig. The rig's size and shape depend on where the oil reservoir is located. In this case, a pump jack is used. A motor turns two crank rods aided by counterweights, which are attached to a pitman arm, which is in turn attached to one end of what is known as the walking beam. The beam is centered on a pivotal point, and the circular momentum of the crank rods force it to rotate back and forth as it is pulled upon by the pitman arm. Attached to the opposite end of the beam is the horse's head, and attached to that is the bridle. As the head travels up and down with the movement of the walking beam, it pulls on the bridle, which is attached to a polished rod. The rod is attached to another rod known as the sucker rod, which extends all the way down into the oil reservoir. At the end of the sucker rod are two valves, the traveling valve and the standing valve. These valves pump the oil up out of the ground as they move up and down with the momentum of the sucker rod. Once the oil is drawn to the surface, it then travels along a small pipeline to a collection plant. This is the end of the third stage of the petroleum industry. From the collection plant, the oil must be transported to a refinery. The fourth stage of the petroleum industry is transportation. In this stage, the petroleum is transported from the production site. This can be done in several ways, by road, rail, sea or pipeline. Pipelines can be thousands of meters long and are typically made from steel with an average diameter of anywhere between 10 to 120 centimeters. The oil is kept in a constant motion by regular pump stations along the pipeline and flows on average at speeds of up to 6 meters a second. The oil's final destination is the refinery, where the last stage of the petroleum industry takes place. The last stage of the petroleum industry is refining. Petroleum essentially is useless in its natural state. What's valuable and useful are the various components that make it up. These components all have different molecular weights and therefore have different boiling points. Petroleum companies take advantage of these different boiling points and use them in order to separate the different components. In order to do this, the petroleum is first heated to temperatures as high as 600 degrees Celsius by pumping it through a furnace. 
The resulting petroleum gas is then piped into what is known as a fractioning tower, or distillation column. As the gas rises up through the tower, different components condense at different heights. A series of bubble caps then prevent the oil from falling down once it condenses. The petroleum is then pumped out through pipes for further refining, such as the removal of sulfur in desulfurization units. Sometimes the heavier elements of petroleum are broken down into lighter, more useful components, using a coker or hydrocracker. The major products resulting from petroleum refining are liquid petroleum gas, gasoline, naphtha, kerosene, diesel fuels, fuel oils, lubricating oils, paraffin wax, bitumen, and petroleum coke. These products are then used in our everyday lives, such as powering our cars. এবার আমরা মুভ করব যে সেপারেটরি ফানেলের সাহায্যে এটা কিভাবে হয় সেটা আমরা দেখে নেব সেপারেটরি ফানেলের সাহায্যে যেটা আমাদের আছে সেপারেটরি ফানেলের সাহায্যে আমরা কিভাবে এটাকে পৃথক করব ঠিক আছে বিফোর দ্যাট সেপারেটরি ফানেল বলব না আমি আমি যেটা এখানে বলতে চাইছি সরি সেটা হচ্ছে যে আংশিকীকরণ স্তম্ভের সাহায্যে আমরা কিভাবে এটাকে সেপারেট করব পৃথক করব Separates it into its different components using fractional distillation. Crude oil is a fossil fuel that we get from deep under the ground and is basically a mixture of lots of different compounds. Nearly all of these compounds, though, are hydrocarbons, which contain only hydrogen and carbon. And the most common type of hydrocarbons are alkanes. Which you covered in the last couple of videos. Now, crude oil is formed naturally from the remains of dead plants and animals, particularly plankton, that died millions of years ago and were buried in the mud. Then, in the millions of years between then and now, the high pressures and temperatures under the ground turned this organic biomass into crude oil. As it formed, this crude oil soaked into the rocks and was stored for millions of years. But we can get it back out by drilling into the rock and sucking it up to the surface. As crude oil takes so long to form, it's affected. We've extracted the crude oil from the ground. We need some way to separate out all of the different hydrocarbons in the mixture because they each have different properties. And so we'll use them for different things. To do this separating, we use a process called fractional distillation, which involves heating the crude oil up and separating out the different compounds by making use of the fact that the different compounds all have different boiling points. The first step is to feed the oil into a chamber and heat it. Until most of it has turned into a gas. We then pass this gaseous mixture into a fractionating column, which is really hot at the bottom but gets cooler towards the top. The idea is that these hot gases will then start to rise up the column. But importantly, as soon as they reach a region that has a lower temperature than their boiling point, they'll condense into a liquid. The hydrocarbons with the longest chains, so the most carbons, have the highest boiling points, and so they'll quickly condense back into a liquid and drain out of the column early on, because it's not hot enough to keep them in their gaseous states. These are things like bitumen, which we use to surface our roads, and heavy fuel oil, which can be separated further and used for things like heating oil. जिज्ञेस कर এই সংযুক্তি ব্যাপারটা কি করে হচ্ছে আমরা উচিত ক্লাসে পড়ব যে অ্যালকেনের একটা সংকেত আছে সেই সংকেতটা হচ্ছে 
cn h2n plus 2 তাহলে দেখো এখানে আছে c6 তার মানে c6 যদি হয় তাহলে h2 12 2 2 6 12 plus 2 তাহলে 14 হবে আবার দেখো c16 যখন হবে তাহলে বলো তো h কত হবে c16 হলে h কত হবে 32 তাহলে আমরা এটা সহজে বুঝতে পারছি যে এটা সংকেত তো তাহলে সি যদি একটা হয় তাহলে এইচ কত হবে এটা কিন্তু আমরা সহজে বুঝতে পারছি বুঝতে পারছি সবাইকে ঠিক আছে তাহলে এই পদ্ধতিতে আমরা এটাকে করব তার সঙ্গে এর সংযুক্তি ববহাস পূর্ণাঙ্গ বিস্তার নাম এটা দেখলাম আমরা অনেক কিছু দেখালাম যেটা হয়তো পাঠ্যপুস্তকের বাইরে কিন্তু আমাদের জানা দরকার যে পেট্রোলিয়াম কিভাবে সঞ্চিত হয় পেট্রোলিয়াম কিভাবে তৈরি হলো আমাদের জানা দরকার যে পেট্রোলিয়াম নিষ্কাশন কিভাবে হয় তারপরে আমাদের সঙ্গে যেটা পাঠ্যপুস্তকের অন্তর্গত পাঠ্যসূচির অন্তর্গত যে সেপারেটরি ফানেল ব্যবহার করে আমরা কিভাবে এই আংশিক ইকোনো স্তম্ভের সাহায্যে মিশরীয় তরল পদার্থ উৎপাদন পাই এবং উপজাত পদার্থগুলো কি তার সংযুক্তি কি আর তার ব্যবহার কি এটা আমাদের জানতে হবে ঠিক আছে তাহলে আশা করছি তোমরা আজকের ক্লাসে সব বুঝতে পেরেছো